by the we're in the garden and I'm by the pond and these flowers are just magnificent this time of year. It's called Iris Sibirica. It's a beautiful deep sort of lilac -y blue um, and we're going to be painting one of these in the studio. I'll be showing you how to do that, how to recreate these beautiful colours. Um, unfortunately it doesn't have a scent which is a real shame but I think it far makes up for that by the way it actually looks and as you can see it, it's quite tall because it comes up to here on me so I'll see you in a minute in the studio. Okay, we're in the studio now and I've got this um, iris flower and I've had to cut the uh, bit of the stem off because it's it's so long and it won't fit into the vase and also it wouldn't fit on my paper so there's just about enough room for this size of paper uh, so to get the whole thing in and allow a little bit at the top. So in a minute I'll show you how to draw this. This is a painting I did a few years ago uh, of Iris Sibirica. It's not quite the same uh, type as the one by the pond but it's it's still got these beautiful colours. So we're going to be doing something like this today, only perhaps slightly looser, not quite so uh, detailed, um, but we'll still be able to get some of the nice veining that you get on these uh, flowers. And of course the colours are stunningly beautiful. I particularly like how the buds uh, go in terms of the colour, the combinations of colour, they're really fabulous. So we'll hopefully be able to show that. So with this lovely flower, I'm going to ask you to do something. It might sound a bit crazy, really, and it is to look at it. When I say look at it, I mean really look at it. Look at how many petals there are. Look at how they are formed. Look underneath. Look at the colours. Look at the buds, how they're formed and the colours. Look at the stem, how thick that is. You can use your pencil to measure things, so you can measure the width. You see, I'm holding the pencil across the width and you measure with your thumb like this. You can then transfer that down to your paper. You can do the height of things as well and the buds. So that's quite a, an easy way of measuring it. But it's just about observation, just making sure you're, you're really familiar with this uh, flower, this beautiful flower. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, of course, you, you don't want to have them sitting out, out of the water for too long. So I'm going to put it in the... Uh, bars of water there. Now that's all very well and dandy but um, I'm getting confused because I'm trying to look at the flower and, and I'm getting all the stuff behind which is confusing me. It, it's in the way. So what I'm going to do, I'll get my little easel here which I'll place behind it like that and I have a sheet of white paper here now that's fabulous, I can see it perfectly now. There's nothing behind to, to interact with that flower. I can see it really clearly. So it's just a little tip if you're doing something like that. Don't be confused by having all that background behind. Put something plain behind, a piece of plain paper or a cloth, uh, and then you can see all the detail a lot clearly. Right, here are some basic essentials that you're going to need to do your drawing. We've got an HB pencil here, we have a 2H pencil and this one's a 4H and you can see they've all got really nice points on here and that's really important for some of that fine detail that you'll need, need to be drawing. And to do that you're going to need a pencil sharpener. This one has got two different apertures for different size pencil and this one, the advantage of this, it's got three di different apertures but also it actually collects all the shavings in there so there's no mess. The other thing you're going to need is a putty rubber and this is very similar to like blue tack. It's very soft and it's very kind to your paper because you don't want to be rubbing out all the time with a hard rubber because it can actually disturb the surface of the paper. To keep these nice fine points I've got a piece of wood here with three different grades of uh, sandpaper on and that's where you can just finely tune that point and make sure you've got it really sharp and then I just wipe that on some tissue. You can see the graphite coming off there um, and that's to stop all the little bits of graphite going onto your paper and making a mess. So that's really the basic few things you need to get started.
Right, well, I'm going to give you a few tips about drawing this. First of all, I'm very um, strict, really, about leaning paper. Um, the reason I say that is that, that when you're drawing, if you haven't got a piece of paper to lean on, you tend to get lots of graphite down this part of your hand. And then what happens, you're smudging that into the paper and the whole thing becomes a mess. So it's very important to start off with really good habits. And one of those is having leaning paper. So you actually lean on this paper whilst you're doing your drawing. Another reason is that we all have natural oils in our skin. And if that gets on the paper, it can actually, when you come around to doing your actual watercolour painting, uh, it can actually resist because they're of the oils in your hands. So another thing to take into consideration is where you want this, what position you want it on the paper. So you want to look at your highest point, which is the tip of this bud here. Now you wouldn't want to have that somewhere like here, where you've only got this tiny little bit of space here. It would look wrong, it would look squeezed in. So you want to have enough space left. So I'm thinking the highest point at which I'd want this tip to be would be somewhere around here. So I'd, I'd make a kind of a mark so I, I would know I wouldn't go any higher than that, okay? So I've got three brushes here. I've got a six, a four and a two. Uh, and these are the three brushes I'll be using. And as you can see, uh, they've all got these very fine tapered points, which is what you'll need for doing this kind of work. Well, I'm going to concentrate on just painting this stem um, for the moment. Uh, we've got a natural break here where it joins uh, the flower and the bud and where it stops down here. So I've got this uh, number six brush which has got some water on so I'm going to do what we call a water wash. So basically it's just plain clean water and I'm dampening the paper all the way down to this point here. Now depending on the conditions where you are, where you're painting, this first appliance of water can dry up. So I'm just going to go over it a couple of times to make sure that it's dampened the paper enough. On this brush, which is my number four brush, I have a nice light yellowish green colour. So I'm just literally going to just paint it straight on, being careful to not go over the edges of my original pencil line. You can see that starting to uh, develop. So I'm just pulling that paint down. You can be a little less careful in the middle, but you have to be so careful coming to these edges not to go over your pencil line. And that's particularly important when it comes to putting your water wash on. Because if you go over the pencil line with your water wash, when you put this colour on, that will follow the water and go over too. So it's important to be accurate in both applications here. So that's the lighter colour. Now whilst this is still damp, I'm picking up the slightly darker green. I'm going to run that down the right hand side of the stem because my light's coming from the left. So I'm just going to run that down. It's actually gone a little bit dry. But what I'm going to do, I'll run this down because I shouldn't really have such a hard line. It's been a very hot day today in the studio, but I'll show you what to do with this. I'm going to have a little go at the this petal here. So again, with my wash brush, I'm just putting a wash on the petal. I'm leaving a, a bit of an area here where it is actually uh, white on the petal. But because we're doing this as a fairly loose and washy picture I'm not too worried about uh, about this it's, it's not going to be a botanical illustration I'm dropping in a nice warm yellow which you can actually see on the petal there so just dropping that in first because with watercolor you want to get your lightest colors in first and then come in with the dark 
and I've mixed up this lovely blue which I've got here and I tend to use a little strip of paper test my colors and then I will actually hold this right up to the petal or the stem to get the green right so that I can see if I've got the right colors I better just uh, re-dampen this a bit because it will have dried by the time I was just talking and then I'm just going to drop in this really beautiful blue so you can see how that water and the colour is just see it feathering there which is actually quite beautiful I think and that's one of the things about watercolour that I actually love how it just moves around on the page on the paper so I'm going to leave a little bit of an area here light because it is like that on the petal and what you can do with this, you can actually lift out. So you can lift out areas. If I get another brush, a nice clean brush, take most of the water off. But if I want to get a lighter area, I'm going to push the brush in here like this. And see, it's actually lifting out. So I've got a lighter, a nice soft, lighter area. And you can do that a number of times. Rinse your brush each time. Just push in and lift out. Where you've got that light area. I can see another light area here. There's a bit of a downward light. It tends The paint tends to want to keep closing in, so you might have to do it a couple of times. But you can see after you've actually put lots of paint on, you can do this thing which is called lifting out. See that? And you get, because it's still damp, you get this nice soft wash. If you're working vertical, of course, you do get paint tending to collect here but because of the water tension it won't actually drip down any further what you can do is just you can just scoop that excess up so that's the first part of doing the petal so i'm now going to put some veins on here so i've got this nice uh, lovely pointed brush that i was talking about earlier and try not to have it too full of paint because you get thicker lines if you want nice thin lines don't have too much paint in here and start doing um, the directional line so I'm looking at my subject I'm doing a line down this it seems to be three main ones just coming down the center here keep looking at your subject don't just make it up because even though this is quite a loose thing it, it's still important to get it right and to get the flow of the petal because they do undulate so you can put that little undulation there I mean believe it or not this is loose for me I know it's not really loose and washy but uh, I spend a lot longer doing this than I am presently but I think you know as a first picture you want to make it possible and doable you don't want to make it too complicated now also on the flower there are some little dotty bits so you can put in with this brush you see I can actually put lots and lots of little dots the other thing you can do is you can actually very gently with your thumb you can just push those filaments apart so you've got like a little fan brush if you can see that and then I can just dot in those little dots quite easily mass-produced dots I call these <laughs> so I'm just putting in those little dotty bits so you have to sort of dampen your brush a bit every now and again it does tend to dry up but you can do that's the sort of thing you can do now also just before we go on this one I'm going to get my wash brush again because I think the left hand side of this needs to have a bit of a deeper colour. So I'm going to grab some more of that deep violety purple colour. I'm going to drop in, let's put some, this is a water wash. If you look, I'm putting this all over the veins that I've just done, look, and they're staying exactly where they were. It's because it was perfectly dry when I put the water wash on. I'm now dropping in some of that darker colour. Now with my water wash brush I'm just softening that edge where it's gone a little bit hard. Can you see that? So just softening, just softening the edges so they 
sort of blending. So you see I'm getting a much deeper colour now, but it's still a nice soft effect. You can do the same here. So I'm just putting a bit, a bit of, small bit of a water wash there. And then I'm just dropping in some deeper, darker colour right on the edge. See how that lovely, rich colour comes up. And I'm just touching into that hard edge with my wash brush to make it nice and soft. So I'm just enhancing some of these veins, making them darker so they stand out a little bit more against the background colour and also the veining tends to branch out even more towards the ends here so don't forget to add that in it's really looking quite dramatic with these lovely colours now so just enhance and deepen those colours and branch out a little bit more all around the edges now, last little thing before I go on this part of the illustrations you can this is all dry here uh, you can re-dampen the edge if you want it a little bit darker with your water brush and then with your brush with the color on look you can look at that color intensify you can drop that in and then with your water brush just touch the edges where it's slightly hard and you get this lovely soft edge here where you've got that still got that lighter bit that I lifted out earlier if you remember and now I'm now deeping, deepening the colour that side. I'll quickly do a little bit extra here, drop in some darker colour and then I'm just going to soften those hard edges with my water brush. So you can work in little areas just to enhance and bring up the colour that's now starting to look quite nice and 3D. So I'm going to crack on with this now. Um, putting in the yellow first of all, because I think I mentioned earlier, you need to get your lighter colours in first. So getting that nice yellow in, softening the edge again with my wash brush. I think that's probably slightly too dark. If, if you find you've done something too dark just get your tissue and just just dab it you see it's taken it off um, immediately so it's never too late with watercolor there are ways of coming back from making mistakes lots of people say that watercolor is unforgiving but I think it's very forgiving <laughs> let's put a little bit more here so that's your lighter bit of yellow so I'm going to get on and drop in the washers for the bluey violet colour and then when they've dried I'm going to put the veins on like I did on this one. I'm then going to go on to do the buds which have a very lovely bright cerise pink part to them before they open um, and you'll see how this is all developing. doing some finishing off on this now so I'm just going to glaze we call it glazing with water it's putting a water glaze on and then coming in, in with the color you can see that lovely dark color and by the reason you put these water washers on is to make 
the paint that you put on appear much softer so you get a nice soft muted effect rather than a very hard edged effect i'm just i've gone over a bit there so i'm just going to extend that petal somewhat that looks better you see i've still retained that nice look of a, of a little bit of light on that petal there okay now going back to these bits i need to put some veins on these so it's just a case of having a look at your subject and making sure you know where those veins go and what they look like so you can see whilst i'm doing this how really important it is to have a nice pointy brush blunt brush won't do it good quality brushes i think as i said in my previous video are like gold dust you're starting off with a good start if you have good brushes good paint and good paper so just putting in some of these little veins here they're sort of thicker down here but they get thinner as they come towards the edge here so the less paint you have on your brush you can get finer lines so i'll just do that to all of these just darken this petal because it's behind the other one just give that a little bit of uh, depth as you can see there just make this a little paler and so just finishing off putting these nice veins on the leaf get a nice delicate touch and this one actually I'm going to just knock these back a bit because they're not quite as dark as that so before it really dries just going to put a water wash on to soften this and it's not a bad thing to show this because it does show you that you know if, if you act fairly quickly you can correct mistakes with watercolor it's never too late really if you act on it as quickly as possible so i need to the next thing i need to do is to just work a little bit on these buds um oh, this is another good lesson i spilt some paint act immediately put water on it and then dab off with a clean tissue if you act quickly you can get rid of that mark so another little lesson learned now finally i'm going to show you how you can free paint uh, one of the leaves because the leaves on these um, irises are long and very sort of straight so i'm going to free paint by free paint i mean i'm not drawing it i'm just going to get a large brush and free paint a leaf so here goes there's one I do one arching this way and one arching that way and there's my painting pretty much almost finished apart from these little bits here so talking about the colors I used for the iris it's a very warm blue so I'm basically going to be using um, a nice ultramarine colour um, and I've got a lovely violet colour here which is a lazarin violet now predominantly you want more of the ultramarine because it is a bluish purple so it, mixing colours is all about proportion so I'm taking a bit of this ultramarine here and I'll show you what that colour colour looks like on its own so that's the ultramarine now that's two blue so I want to add a little bit more red into it so I'm going to add some of this violet color to the blue but it's all about proportion with mixing color so I only took a tiny bit of that and let's see how you see that's changed that immediately more to the color that I want for my flower so proportion so m m mostly ultramarine with a tiny little bit of that purple colour. Now for this green, this is permanent sap green and that looks like this straight from the pan. So that's a nice green but it's a little bit too green so I'm going to add a small amount of yellow to it and again just a tiny bit on the end of the brush 
a little bit more and that will make that warmer if you can see the difference with a little bit of yellow added however it's still a little bit more olivey here now on the color wheel the complementary color to green is red and if you add a little bit of this complementary color look i'm just taking a tiny little tip there and i'm adding it to the green it makes it a much softer um let's just do that again i had a bit too much see that's a, a quite an olivey green so from the one color the permanent sap green add a little bit of yellow and then a very very tiny bit of red if you think you've added too much you'll need to start again but i think mixing colors it is all about proportion the more you do it uh, the better you'll become at color mixing um, and for the yellow here on the iris i used a hansa yellow which is a nice clear yellow it's a nice transparent yellow if you haven't got that um the cadmium yellow will do but of course anything with cadmium in it will be a little bit more opaque so have a little experiment with your colors think about the proportion practice getting these colors right use these little strips hold it against your flower which i haven't got here at the moment hold it against your painting check the colors and everything should be fine Right, here we have uh, a small selection of some of the hundreds of books that I've illustrated over my, seems quite a long time, 45 years of being a professional illustrator. And although I'm widely known for my wildlife illustrations, there's uh, quite a few different subjects here. There's a book of, on fossils here, book on frogs and beetles. This is a book on architecture, how to read houses, this one. Um, Good old Keith Floyd, he was fun to work with. I illustrated his first two books, a book on scything. Uh, this is a book on skeletons, which was quite interesting. Uh, I've got this book here, Nick Baker's Bug Book, which was a lovely book to work on. I did the cover on that one. And also this one, Insects and Spiders, I did the cover for that as well, which is always a, a real privilege. Book on dolphins and whales and Last but not least, of course, the late, great Will Giles. Um, this is his book he wrote, um, and I helped to do the illustrations for, for this. So, it, as I said, it's just a small selection of some of the books that I've illustrated over the past few years. After a hard day's painting in the studio, I think it's time for a gin and tonic. <laughs> 